Good morning, metalheads of the internet, and welcome to a brand new episode of I Am Definitely Sober Right Now. Definitely. I definitely did not drink like two or three or four or five old fashions before starting this video. And today we are talking about the latest studio album from Saval Bard entitled The Weight of the Mask. This is the fourth full-length studio album and the first released via Nuclear Blast Records from this English metal crew known for their fusion of black metal, black gaze, post-metal, post-hardcore, as well as politically charged and emotionally charged lyrics and concepts. I first came to know them back in 2018, 2019-ish, shortly after the release of their sophomore studio album, It's Hard to Have Hope. I loved how abrasive it was. I loved how uncompromising and poignant and urgent and provocative it was. I loved all of the atmospheric textures and soundscapes and the clean vocals and how that contrasted with everything else that was so dark and so heavy. It was just an incredibly powerful record, and so too was its successor, When I Die Will I Get Better, released in late 2020, which very much felt like both an expansion on and a refinement of the musical and lyrical themes and concepts and ideas of the aforementioned It's Hard to Have Hope. With this in mind, I have been highly anticipating the release of The Weight of the Mask, and I am happy to now confirm to all of you that not only have I heard this thing, multiple times, but I've also dissected it, and I am ready to talk to you all about it. I am ready to tell you that this is yet another excellent release from the band. In my opinion, not as impactful as It's Hard to Have Hope and When I Die Will I Get Better, but nonetheless, uh, a powerful and incredibly well-constructed record in its own right and in its own regard. It does a great job at expanding upon the trajectory of its predecessor, When I Die Will I Get Better, with more string instruments and more reverb and better production and more multi-layered ambient and atmospheric vocal assaults and dynamics. And simultaneously, it also focuses the lyrical and conceptual subject matter, dealing primarily with issues surrounding mental health and mental illness. It's worth acknowledging, too, that at least as far as I can tell, just from, like, interviews leading up to this album's release and, like, everything that kind of happened behind the scenes with this record, this is the most comfortable and the most safe and healthy that Savalbard have ever sounded. Now that's not to say that this is like a super happy-go-lucky enlightening record full of positive vibes because that isn't really the case, but it does seem brighter and more optimistic in comparison to where we were lyrically and conceptually on the last two albums. We're still in a dark tunnel, but we're finally seeing the light at the end of said dark tunnel. I think that I might partially be feeling this way because the band is also being much more upfront and direct in the actual lyricism itself. With Serena Cherry specifically saying, I wanted it to be as though I'm there talking to them. I think there's something really, really powerful in being completely honest and open and down to earth about depression and the reality of depression, rather than dressing it up in a poetic manner. Hopefully, in being so direct about it, I can make others feel like they're not alone with what they're going through. Wisely, though, the album opens with its most straightforward and its most lyrically digestible and understandable cut, Faking It, which very clearly expresses how people with depression and mental illness fake it so as to not bother the people around them, so as that they might live a semi-normal life, even if just for like a day. It's a very blunt and abrasive track, getting straight to the point with some more aggressive rhythms and like crescending atmospheric black metal tremolo riffage. I like it though, and I think this more bare bones kind of approach is a great way to start the album and to maybe introduce people to Suval Bard who didn't already know who they are. With the following number, Eternal Spirit, Saval Bard starts to sound more like the Saval Bard that I'm familiar with, implementing some slower grooves, some clean vocals, some great harmonies, some synthesizers as well. But even here we get a little bit of a lyrical twist, as this whole thing is being penned as a tribute to metal and rock musicians who we've lost within the past couple of years, specifically to Joey Jordison of Slipknot fame. In almost Alcestian or Lantlosk-esque fashion, tracks like November and Lights Out do a great job at combining and contrasting the most beautiful and the most brutal aspects of Savalbard's sound. 
with November having this very gradual and cinematic climb and build with like this very melancholic guitar work and these very soft spoken vocals before eventually blossoming into what kind of feels like late 90s atmospheric black metal, but with like a modern black gaze kind of coat of paint or lens. And then with Lights Out having this very cold, adventurous kind of like vintage black metal riffage and then also some slower, more dreamy and ambient kind of like vocal passages and sections. The closing number to Wilt Beneath the Weight is great too. A lot of really like agonizing vocal displays here. We're leaning further into some post-hardcore influence as well with a lot of the chords and with a lot of the progressions. It almost kind of reminds me of like another kind of like post-metal, post-hardcore kind of band like Respire. How to Swim Down though is the obvious, inarguable, dare I say, objective standout here on the record. I just really love how this thing kind of brings together like this really mellow and spacious kind of like post-rock and shoegaze-esque song craft and then kind of builds on that with some very simplistic horn and string arrangements. Even as more aggressive black metal riffage and percussion is introduced, you still have these like angelic vocal harmonies and dynamics kind of soaring over above. It's a genuinely beautiful cut, the best song on the record, maybe one of the best cuts that Savalbard has ever delivered. A solid runner-up for best cut on the record though, in my opinion at least, would be Pillar in the Sand, which almost feels like Savalbard's attempt at like a post-metal, black gaze, post-hardcore kind of power ballad. Like it has a pretty similar momentum in a lot of ways. It's a very emotive and intimate and revealing cut and much like a classic power ballad does eventually kind of like grow into something a little bit more explosive and like powerful. Love the production on this record. Love how dense and spacious everything is. Love how warm and cold it can be simultaneously. I love horns and strings and the orchestral stuff and how all of that is specifically integrated into the record. It's not overwhelming, it's not blaring, it's actually in a lot of parts and in a lot of sections quite subtle. Serena specifically cited My Dying Bride as an influence for how they integrated a lot of string and horn stuff into the record and honestly I, I kind of see it. I can kind of get that. I'm feeling a solid four to five on this. I'll concede that it's not really moving me the way that previous records in their discography have, but it is still in its own right, in its own regard, a very powerful and well-constructed record. It's definitely not as creative or as experimental or as totally fucking brutal as other records were, uh, but I'm kind of okay with that because as much as I love those other records, they were made from like a weirder and more uncomfortable kind of space. Whereas again, I, I feel as if this is coming from a more comfortable and safe and healthy place. Even though we're discussing and exploring some fucked up stuff, it genuinely sounds as if Savalbard are just way happier on this record. And that just shows consistently across this record, especially when played again, alongside something like It's Hard to Have Hope. With this in mind, if you're looking for a record that is emotionally a little bit more challenging, but you don't want to be like driven to tears or completely overwhelmed, I think this is a good record to check out and explore. And obviously with this all in mind, if you love Savalbard, guess what? You're gonna love this record too. I don't really have much more to say. I kind of want to get back to drinking old fashions. So yeah. There you have it. I think it's a great record. Four to five. Great. You should definitely check it out. And that is it for the Metal Meltdown. I'm not an expert, nor do I claim to be. So what do you think? Do you like this record? Do you not like this record? And what do you want to hear from me next? And thank you for watching. Make sure you press subscribe right here so you get updates on the Metal Meltdown e fuck immediately. And as always, you have yourself a fantastic fucking day.